Hey, it's Johannes Tyrannis here, and um, uh, today let's talk about progress traps and how this will affect Western civilization, or basically, what's the end game? Before I start, I'd like to remark that we always speak of Western civilization, that is Western Europe and North America, and say also, they say Japan is included, and they say Australia and South Africa are included. But what about, what about Russia? Russia isn't part of the West, but we can also speak of Northern civilization, which is basically white people civilization, the Europeans and the West Russians, who both embarked on a quest of colonialism in their day. The Russians expanded eastward to take that massive swab of land that they control nowadays, and the Europeans took to the seas. They used their sailboats to go to North America, Latin America, South America, South Africa, and, uh, and Australia, and so on and so forth. So we can speak of if you speak of white civilization, that's basically northern civilization, and the rest would be southern or equatorial. But what is a progress trap, and why does it, why will it affect western civilization or northern civilization? A progress trap is when a group of people start working with a new sort of technology or a new way of doing things that for a while reaps them a great benefit. You can imagine a new kind of agriculture or a new kind of uh, social life, a city building, for example. And you start doing the agriculture or whatever they're doing. And for some time, for several generations, or maybe even several centuries, it keeps working. It, it keeps giving them a benefit. Uh, I might come up with an example. is when we, men of the West, discovered we could use oil to fuel engines, and we could use those engines to power locomotives and, and cars and, and planes and whatnot. So we're using a new kind of technology or a new innovation to our benefit, but the very technology that we are using eventually erodes the soil. So after five or six centuries, very quickly, the whole society collapses. The soil is no longer fertile. We can no longer grow food. This kind of thing is exactly what happened to many civilizations in the past. If you read the book by um, Joseph Tainter, The Collapse of Complex Societies, he explains what he calls the law of diminishing returns, which is very related to the concept of a progress trap. The law of diminishing returns says that the more economic units, like people, the more people you add to a society, the more people you add to a civilization, the less and less those people are going to earn more to a point where you add more people to society and there is no more benefit gained. That means the society as a whole, the whole economy, has achieved a sort of peak, peak economy, you may call it, or peak civilization. At that point, any more people you add to the civilization come at a cost to the whole. If you imagine a civilization being a sort of uh, organism, it is at that point that, this, that the organism starts dying. For every person born, one other person must disappear. And soon, for every per person born, two people must disappear, and so on and so forth. What usually happens is people leave. In the old days, say in Latin American civilizations or Rome, ancient Rome and whatnot, people simply left. They could leave because there was still enough free land elsewhere. The world wasn't as overpopulated as it is today. Uh, pardon me, I keep having to move the camera around a bit <laughs> to avoid the sunlight hitting the lens so it flares up. So the law of diminishing returns is a sort of almost universal law that predicts that all societies will eventually collapse because, as I said, uh, it becomes economically no longer viable to continue the operation. I was thinking, what was the great invention of Western civilization? You would say, oh, it's democracy. But it's probably the discovery of oil, that we can use oil for engines. We've become so reliant on the cheap energy provided by oil, it will be very hard to find a replacement. Though this isn't exactly the thing that I want to get into. Um, if you look at a progress trap, I told you about uh, adding people to a city, adding people to a society, and all, and all of a sudden the whole thing comes to a stop. Something like this, a collapse, could be wholly unforeseen, and it could happen in just a few years. It happens right at that moment where the most intelligent people, where the, most, the people most involved, the most invested in their society, decide that they get bored with it and they want to leave. The same principle also applies to, for example, companies like Google or Facebook, the brightest minds, the best developers, the best coders. They want to work at these companies where, where the most interesting things are being done in terms of research and development and, and, and you know, innovation. Until all of a sudden, at some point, the best minds start getting bored with the 
work they keep having to do just to maintain uh, a website like Facebook or to maintain something like, like Spotify. And the best minds start to leave. They either retire and they find completely other things to do. Maybe they start their own farm. So now I can finally introduce to you what I really want to talk about. As Western civilization became so successful, in Europe first, industrial age, and then later in America as well, and uh, elsewhere, the technology that we invented in Europe and in North America, well, it spread to the South. It spread to Africa, it spread to other parts of the world by word of mouth, but also by education, also by copying and stealing and espionage. And also simply through the sale of weapons. The United States, for example, under Obama sold billions of dollars of weapons to the Saudis. And you, you may wonder why, because they're using those weapons now to attack the Yemeni population next door. But as a consequence of this, the populations in Africa have been able to grow explosively. And unlike China, which at some point enforced a uh, one child per woman policy, which I believe they now abolished uh, or abandoned in the meantime, uh, Africans are not doing this. In Central Africa, Central African women, say in the Republic of Congo, they are having on average seven children per woman. In Europe, it's maybe, in Spain, I believe it's just one, one child per white woman. So as we have hit our limits in a natural way, as China used policy to limit their growth, they're not doing any of this in Africa, and Africa is baby booming right now. All those children coming from Africa, where are they going to go? There's no future for them in Africa itself. So they go to Europe, they go to America. Why? Because they are extremely motivated to win the benefits of Western society, our material wealth, iPhones and cars and fancy modern houses with a, with a jacuzzi built in, for example. They still dream of these things, the things that we have almost had enough of, they still dream of. So they are extremely motivated to come and get those things, to come and get that wealth. At the start of the video, I mentioned the difference between are we talking about Western civilization or if we're talking about white civilization, we're talking really about modern civilization. So modern civilization has reached its limits to growth. How do I know this? Well, well babies. <laughs> uh, the white people in the Netherlands, for example, stagnated their population growth around 1990. It hasn't grown since. How is this possible? We're just not having children. But for some reason, we were able to migrate in 5 million immigrants from within Europe and outside of Europe. How does that even work? The answer is that the people coming to the West, to countries like the Netherlands or even the United States or Canada, they are willing to do the same work for less or they are, what is really the case, of course, is they are doing less educated work that we still can profit of, we Westerners can still profit of. What it, what it means is you literally have a class of lower quality people willing to do lower quality work for less. And that's the only reason why they are being added. It's also the reason why white women in general are not interested in having two, three, four, or five children anymore because they know damn well that if they had five children, four of them would have to work in a factory and they don't want that. They want their children to be successful. They want their children to be lawyers and doctors, the real lawyers and the real doctors, not the ones who claim to be one but there isn't that much need, that's, there isn't that much demand for the highly educated people. But the newcomers, the migrants coming to the West or to the North rather, uh, they also age. They've had, they may have a baby boom at a different timeline where we had one, but then they also age and they also grow up. What, what is happening right now, however, is that we have in Europe a very old native population, very old white population, of an average age like mine, over 40. I think the median age in Germany is almost 45 right now. And it's the same in Russia. Russia is also an aged population. They also have very old people, too many old people. Take a country like Ukraine, for example. They have a massive population of over, over 40, and they have an almost non-existent population of 25 to 30 year olds, and they have very few young people uh, uh, below 15. That is a dying nation. We are looking at dying nation, why? We in the West had our baby booms, but because of that, because we had so much success with the baby boomers, they are now hoarding the wealth, or actually hoarding 
what I would call Lebensraum or life opportunity or life living space for their own younger generations. And you know how people are. People of all ages are about the same. They are, the people can be very selfish and nobody over 50, nobody over 60, nobody over 70 is willing to uh, step aside to let the young generations take over. They all want to stay in charge because everybody thinks we're going to be 120 years old nowadays. Uh, <clears throat> our own Western elites, that includes native elites, also includes the cabal, they look at their own population and they see the sort of opportunities we might not think of, namely, what if you slaughtered the middle class, took all their wealth and used that money, including pension funds, use it to fund the arrival of millions and millions of immigrants who are so motivated to work for the wealth that our civilization still has to offer in the latter days of our civilization, I would say. You could do that. And that is exactly how I think it will play out. Our own elites, they will take the wealth from the middle classes. They will, take your, they will rob your pension funds blind. They will even kill you off if they can. As long as they can then use that wealth to invest in an entirely new race of people arriving to Europe or North America. In, Amer in North America, it will be Latino. And in Europe, it will be Muslim and Ara uh, Arab and African peoples coming to our lands. And they will use that wealth basically to buy a completely new people and to buy that people's loyalty by giving them prizes. You, you know, you have to look at this from above. You look at it from above, you're looking down on people. You see, you see all these people, all these young African men wanting to have an iPhone and willing to do work for it, willing to fight for it. They, they were willing to come over here, weren't they? So the more, the more motivated ones have already been selected. The less motivated ones stay behind in Africa. So you've got motivated people willing to listen, willing to be educated, willing to parrot your words, all right? From the perspective of, of billionaires, these are the sort of people that you want to control. You want to exploit their motivation. You want to exploit their dreams. This is something that has already been done to our people in the past. In the past 500 years, we have been exploited. Our motivation to work and to have a better life has been exploited. All right? Our dreams have been exploited and now we find out that their dreams have been trampled. So we're going to see a massive transfer of wealth. We're going to see a transfer of wealth from the richer white middle classes in the West or in Northern civilization to the Southern peoples, to the Southern races, because our own elites are mediating this process. And this brings me to another topic, is that what is the best way to rob somebody without them having them fight you over it? And that is to cause or create division. This is what I think the conflict between the West and Russia has been all, all about all this time or it evolved into this, that while we white people are now, you know, either rooting for Ukraine or you're rooting for Russia or you're hating on the Russians or you're hating on the Ukrainians, whatever, whichever side you pick, you've been divided. And as you have been divided, you aren't noticing that your entire civilization is both collapsing and at the same time, your workers, your high quality workers, your highly educated workers, your deeply invested peoples, middle classes are being replaced by hordes and hordes of immigrants from Africa and the Muslim world and in America by Latin Americans and perhaps even Asian people. And we did it ourselves. They even got us to pay for it through development aid. And they'll show you these photos of a poor starving little baby in Africa and now give us your money. And they use that money, they call it development aid, to develop African society, but they're also using that same money to get Africans to come over to Europe to get Muslims to, they're, they're funding the migration with these funds. So this is the basic black pill story, but then what the hell are we going to do? Well, I'll tol I told you, I told you that in a, when civilizations collapse, more and more people feel that the civilization no longer benefits them, <clears throat> meaning it, it no longer adds anything to their lives. And those people will be the first to start leaving. This is very, very important that as civilizations collapse, it doesn't mean everybody starves all of a sudden. It usually means people leave. Now, in our timeline, it may be hard to leave because unlike in ancient Rome, where you could leave and you could go to Persia or you go to the Germanies or wherever, you could go anywhere. Nowadays, the whole Western world or Northern world 
is overpopulated. Our cities are chock full of people. There is no more land, free land for you to, to colonize or to start a family or to settle on. You can't have that life of the, of the settlers of North America who went uh, westward to Los Angeles and so on and so forth in their carts and their wagons right, on horseback. So does that mean that we're stuck? No, it doesn't. I noticed that on YouTube and other platforms, a certain kind of videos is extremely popular. They get four or five million views. And those are the videos where men or women go into the woods to live off the grid. They build a basic home from nothing, using nothing but an ax or a saw. This off the grid movement, where people also learn to live autarkically so they can provide their own food and clothing to themselves. They acquire these skills. And you see how exciting that can be if you are stuck in a slavish job in an office in New York City or in Amsterdam and you're just fed up with it and you want to do something yourself. You want to be in charge of your own life again and to live autonomously again. You will want to leave that office world, wouldn't you? You would want to leave that life completely and find out that the life of the people, the way people used to live in the 19th or 18th or 17th century in the woodlands autonomously is much more interesting to you. It piques your imagination and your, it, it forces you to think and use your brain for once. That this life is just a lot more interesting. What I think is happening right now is that Precisely those Western peoples, white peoples who've had enough of urban civilization, who don't like the idea of being told what to do anymore, taxed to death, essentially, they want to get out. And I think that's the only way forward. The only way forward, because I believe any war between uh, Europe and Russia or NATO and Russia is just a scam to try to kill us off quicker anyway than to take our money and to take our pension funds and whatnot and to spend it on the migrants. We shouldn't waste a second of our time uh, fighting Russia. What I think is that the, if you look at the people, the Russian people, the European peoples and the North American peoples, we represent the Northern Hemisphere. And if we would only work together, then we could defund the immigration into our lands so that we can return to somewhat more meaningful but a bit less modern lifestyles, traditional lifestyles. So in conclusion, I hope I kind of explained something meaningful here, is that uh, the progress trap that affects every civilization leads to a uh, the law of diminishing returns, where you add more people to a society, the society as a whole no longer gains anything. That means new births come at a cost. And beyond that, people start to leave the society. This is how societies collapse. People just are fed up. They don't think it's intellectually stimulating to be a part of anything anymore. And they leave. They start over. Usually, these new starts start also with new belief systems, new religious beliefs, for example. Uh, you would use your old ones, of course, and develop from there. The sooner you accept that our civilization is not only over, but that the whole notion of civilization itself may be coming to an end, of urban civilization especially. The sooner you will be willing to start learning, acquiring the very skills you're going to need to survive in an environment such as this one where I'm at right now.